The Tour de France resumes in the Pyrenees. The 139 survivors now face their longest and the hardest day. They will leave Andorra and go down through Spain. They'll come into France via the Col de Portillon. They'll climb the Col de Perisord, and then they'll finish on the vicious climb of the Plata Day, high above the village of saint lary soulon For some, it'll be a day of decision. And it's goodbye to Andorra this morning, rolling out in sunshine at 9.30. The riders now heading down the road three kilometres and they'll be into Spain. This is the route they face today. It's a tough one. They begin by climbing the Colado del Canto up to 1,720 metres. Then they go on to the Puerto de la Bonega, 2,072 metres. They come back into France on the Col de la Portillon at 1,293 metres, onto the Col de Perisord above Luchon, and finally, they finish on top of the Plata Day at 1,680 metres, in all 230 kilometres today. A cold start for the riders this morning, 7 degrees Celsius in the valley of Andorra. But that will change later in the day as the sun comes out and heats up the valleys to 25 degrees Celsius. But the big problem for the riders is when they go over the top of these peaks, it's going to be 8 degrees C. And that'll cause problems on the descent, again with that chill factor. And the chance for two great sporting rivals to enjoy the early neutralised formation. Tony Rominger here talking with the yellow jersey Miguel Indurain. Well, it could be a day of decision, but they're friends at least at the moment. The field rolling through magnificent scenery, and you can forgive them for all staying together, rather like a touring ride at the moment, because the hills here make it an absolutely marvellous backdrop. The riders now are coming up the top of the Colado del Canto. It's quarter to 11 in the morning. Tony Rominger showing a clean pair of wheels to Claudio Chiapucci and David Cassani there in third place. And bikes not the only mode of transport here in the Pyrenees. If you haven't got a bike, well, why not have a horse? One o'clock now, the next challenge of the day, the Col de la Banaguia in Spain, 118 kilometers covered and Rominger in action again ahead of Cassani. Inaki Gaston, a small elite group breaking clear of the field at the top of the climb. And now the riders are coming up to the top of the Col de Portillon. It's goodbye to Spain and back into France. And Tony Rominger again leading over the top, this time from Miguel in Durain. Now on the descent down into Luchon. And as the two leaders have formed on the descent, we're in Luchon itself. And Claudio Chiapucci leading Massimo Garotto at the feeding station. And Garotto there not taking that feeding bag at all well. And behind the two leaders, Girotto and Chiapucci, there's now a chase group forming. And now we're about four kilometres from the top of the Col de Perisord. And this is Massimo Girotto. And this is the man himself, Claudio Chiapucci. He's now at last free of Indurain, but not by very much, Paul, because Indurain is about half a minute back in a group of eight riders. And he's not chasing very much at the moment, Indurain, because that's not his job. His job is to watch. Tony Rominger, who started to attack on the, the climb just before we came down into Luchon, the Col de Portillon. And in fact, it, so violent was that attack that it dragged away the top six riders in the overall classification at the moment. And we will surely have a sort out on the final climb up here to Plata Day. Well, Massimo Girotto, who's won a couple of stages over the years in the Tour de France. And for it was Claudio Chiapucci who took his first ever win in a stage race there when he beat none other than Miguel Indurain after a great escape by just one second. And Val Laurent is not very far away from here. In fact, we saw the signs pointing to that as we drove up to the finish today. Now, many of you have telephoned in asking how the elimination time is decided each day in the mountains. Well, in fact, there are a number of different tables which the riders are in possession of and the elimination time is based on the average speed for the day's racing. So obviously, if it's a very fast average speed, the riders have more time to come in. If it's a very slow speed, which it is today, then the riders will find they haven't got very long at all. So it's a percentage based on the winner's time of the day. It varies between 10% and goes as far out as 20%. Kiyopuchi doing most of the work on this climb and happy to do so he went out training by himself yesterday Paul Sherwin and myself saw him uh, climbing a hill and uh, a little gaggle of people at the bus stop applauding him past as he went up the mountain 
There's Robert Miller there setting the pace. This is the third group on the road now. Miller attacked earlier, but was quickly brought back into the field. And this group is coming up, I think, Paul, to the Indurain group. Well, Miller's putting a lot of pressure on. He knows this climb very well. In fact, when he came over the other direction a few years ago, it was on his way to victory. The man in second place is Franco Vona, who we saw attacking uh, two days ago. And then third place with the pink jersey, that is Johan Brunil, the rider who's been doing an excellent job in this Tour de France. Zenon Yaskula continuing to ride an exceptional tour on the right-hand side. Number 84, and Mechia. I think, uh, Paul, that a rider like Alvaro Mechia is going to need to attack either today or tomorrow because he'll lose his second place in the time trial if he doesn't gain time over the riders who are close to him. There's the remnants of the peloton. Perini sitting at the back of that group while Miller is leading it. Johan Brunil. Uh, it looks like Cubino is up here as well. What's very noticeable today, though, is there's a big absence of Bonesto riders. There is one Bonesto rider in this group of 15 behind, but there are three class riders, so it may well be that Tony Rominger might put the balance in his favour as we go along the valley and the approach to the Planet A climb, because Miguel Indurain today is totally devoid of all teammates. And now it's one kilometre to go to the summit. And Kipuchi has led all of the way up. He's been scoring steadily in the mountains today, but not as well as Tony Rominger. Rominger consolidating his overall lead in the race for the Polka Dot Jersey competition. Conti still setting the pace. Indrain, as always, just sits there and watches and matches the effort, but slowly and surely that second group is going to make contact, probably in the last kilometre of the climb. Now, Il Diablo, the devil, as... Kiapucci loves to be called, is now coming up towards the summit of the Col de Pessor. Well, just before he gets to the summit, I have to tell you one little anecdote which I found quite amusing, is when he got married just recently and changed the dresses, he sent out a card to all his friends saying, El Diablo has moved house. <laughs> Six and a quarter hours today, and there's still plenty of time before the finish, I'm afraid, and no challenge to Claudio, who comes over the top first, and followed by... Massimo Girotto who looks at him as more or less to indicate are we going to keep going down the hill together and then uh, no big sprint there either for the places it looks as though Rominger is going to take third so he scores well again and uh, builds continues to build his lead in uh, the king of the mountains 20 seconds the time gap and now the main group is coming over what's left of them anyway and they're going to pick up on the descent with the second group, there's Johan Brunil coming through. There's the class riders also here. Uh, Raoul Alcala putting the daily newspaper up his jersey there. And Robert Miller tacked on to the back. And so the riders are over the top of the Col de Pere Sword. Not much in it at all. It's going to be showdown on the Plata Day today for sure. We'll take a break. Welcome back to the Tour de France today as we head up towards the Plata Day. And for those of you who have written in saying, where are the crowds this year? Well, here they are, a huge crowd on top of the mountain above saint henri sur enjoying a family atmosphere. And not surprisingly, Miguel Indurain has plenty of support here as well because we're very close still to the Spanish frontier. And the people here can also follow every pedal stroke out on the course because they can see the Tour de France coming towards them live on the big screen. Now let's go down and join the action. We're a lot lower down the slope now. The riders having just started the climb of the Plata Day. And there was a general regrouping on the descent of the Pear Sword. And Miguel Indurain, third in line, now seems to have got, for the moment at least, a control over this lead group. Well, this is the steep part at the foot of the Plata Day, which is the, climb that, the, the name of the climb that goes up to saint lary soulon and you can see the damage being done at the back. Number three, Jean-Francois Bernard, and Massimo Girotto, number 65, just coming off the back. The pace from the bottom has been set straight away by the class team, and I think it may well be that Tony Rominger is preparing to launch an attack as we get nearer to the summit of the climb, because his team were absolutely phenomenal along the valley road here. And now you can see the huge crowds here on the lower slopes of the Pas de John Anzaga, Rominger, Indurain, 
Now, is Indurain feeling the pressure, Paul? His face looks to me as though it might well be today. We don't normally see him get out of the saddle. Well, Look at this. This is what I was waiting for ever since the bottom of the climb, an attack to come from Tony Rominger. And it looks to me as if Indurain is suffering a little bit to try and get onto the wheel there, Rominger. But every time he manages to react and comes up to it, he's only got one man to mark in this race, the Tour de France this year, and that is Tony Rominger. And look, straight away, they've gone clear. Well, Rominger really hurt Indurain then, but he's hung on to that attack. But Rominger is a far better climber than Miguel. If he can produce another acceleration like that, we might at last uh, prove to the world that Miguel Indurain is like the rest of us, Paul and human. Well, I think he is. Two days ago before the rest day, he did look to me as if he was suffering a little bit on those climbs going into Andorra, and you can see the grimace on his face, but these riders have had such a horrendous day today. It's one of the long stages of the mountains, 230 kilometers it's been, and Rominger attacking again, trying to get rid of Indurain, and you can see it's not very often you see Indurain losing his posture like that. He's lowered the top part of his body, and he's giving everything to try and stay with a Swiss rider. Superb riding by Rominger. I think somebody's had a talk with Tony Rominger yesterday and tried to make him believe in himself that he is climbing the mountains better than Indurain and the only way to beat Indurain is to constantly accelerate and the stop-go racing is something that Indurain hates. He loves to ride at a rhythm, he hates the acceleration. Now the rest of the Tour de France suddenly blown away here. They've all gone with the acceleration of Rominger and Miguel Indurain is hanging on. And this is Zenon Yaskula. This rider never ceases to surprise me. He suffers all of the time, but he hangs on in there. He's got Mekia on his back wheel, followed by Roach on the far right of the picture. And it looks as though Kipuchi might be in a spot of bother there alongside Stephen. Now, Stephen Roach will try to nurse Claudio Kipuchi, their teammates, and he'll see if he can bring him back up to those two leaders there. But Robert Miller's coming back, the man in third place on the road at the moment. You can see the little bobbing style of the Scott. Miller coming up, this is a great move for Miller because if he can catch these two riders, the battle between them is going to be a tactical one and we may well see that Miller will go straight by and try and get that victory in the mountains that he wants. Well, really, if Miller is going to win in the Pyrenees, he's got to win today because tomorrow, although we have two mountains, it's a long way down to the finish in Po and I don't think the running will suit him. I think there might be a regroupment at the front and so Miller needs to win today if he's going to win at all in this tour and he's coming back. Yes, Cooler a little bit further down the slope there has got rid of Alvaro Mechia, the man who was in second place on the world. Claudio Chiapucci really suffering here has been dropped by them all, obviously paying for the efforts that he put in on the Col de Perisord a little bit earlier today. So that violent double acceleration by Tony Rominger for the moment has settled down again. And here comes Yaskula joining Robert Miller and the pair of them can now see the two leaders just up the road. And Indurain hanging on to Tony Rominger today, and I'm sure Rominger will go again very shortly. He will definitely try because he's got to keep going all the way up to the top of this climb, but the man who's doing the ride of the moment is the Scott Robert Miller. He can't quite get up to those two leading riders, but now that he's been caught by Zenon Yaskula, that might give him a little bit of psychological help to push it a little bit further. And if he can get to them, then it's a great chance for Robert Miller. And this is a magnificent piece of riding by Zenon Yaskula, the Polish boy. He has ridden a fabulous Tour de France and he might well be moving up into second place because he's gone straight past Robert Miller. He's gone straight by him and he's now trying to latch on to the Swiss-Spanish Express up the road there. This is Stephen Roach and Alvaro Mejia. Moto3 tells us it's our third camera on the road, so they're a little way behind. Mejia now trying to conserve what advantage he's got He's got 1 minute and 22 seconds in hand over Yaskula, and Yaskula is now ahead of him, and he could be slipping out of second place overall to the Polish rider, who is about to join the two leaders. Here he comes. Well, that's a superb ride by this man who is not renowned as one of the climbers of this race. He's coming up to the two riders in front, and Rominger has tried everything, and as soon as the road goes up again, I feel sure he will accelerate and try and get rid of Indurain. Indurain has really had to pull out the stops. Look at the face of the man there. He's really suffering to stay in contact with Tony Rominger, the Swiss rider in the polka jot jersey there. For the first time, we've seen Indurain in pain, and now Yaskula has joined. Now, if Yaskula, who's ridden across this gap so well, has enough strength, there's two riders here now, can counter-attack the yellow jersey. Well, the gaps are not enormous at the moment. Mechier is at 17 seconds. 
And here comes Miller. And in fact, he doesn't want our camera in the way, understandably perhaps, but he's not climbing as well as he was in the Alps. Here comes Mechia, found his rhythm again after those accelerations by Romiga. Roach also is struggling now, but he's hanging on. And they're going well clear of the rest of what was a group of 27 riders at the start of this climb. We have three riders in the lead. Miguel Indurain, Tony Romiga, Zenon Yaskula. And then we go back to this chase group of two. Alvaro Mechia and Robert Miller. And just behind Miller is Stephen Roach. And here he is. And that Rominger has settled down, he's got his rhythm going. But he's going to have to produce another acceleration like he did at the bottom of the slope if he's going to open up the gap again. Well, Roach is back, we're coming to the slightly easier part of the climb. The foot of this climb here, which is known as Planade, climbs up to the ski resort of saint laurie soulon really is vicious. And it seems now that the riders are starting to get into their own rhythm. Roach has come back to the Scott Robert Miller and Alvaro Mechia, but they are about 15 seconds down on the three leaders at the moment. It looks like we've got a little bit of a traffic jam here in front of the three riders because the cars and the motorbikes just cannot get out of the way and I'm sure that Tony Rominger was slowed down a little bit there. Well, this is, is what the organization does not want. They're very conscious of it. And I should imagine that the motorcyclists there will be getting an earful from the Radio Tour organization making them move away from the riders and there's well, a beautiful face there a shot there paul of tony romager's face well uh, that's why he's suffering so much they're actually increasing their gap came up at 30 seconds now as they went through the town of soulon which is about five kilometers from the finish and a good fight back by andy hampson he's come up to the wheel here of miller mechia and roach under the four kilometers to go banner Rominger in charge, but he hasn't done what he had hoped, and that was shake off the rider in yellow. And he's going to have to go again because as we get close to the finish, Indre will be saying to himself, Well, you're not getting much time back on me, and I can afford perhaps to lose a little bit of time with the time trial to come. Over Tony Rominger, he leads him by five minutes and 44 seconds, and that really is an enormous amount of time now as this mountain begins to run out on the finishing line. An attack now by Roach and Hampston in fact has let Roach go because he is trying to nurse Mechia to the top of this climb and it's not a big gap at the moment Paul. Well just as they go under the banner there for four kilometers to go it's actually going to be around about 40 seconds and it's a bad sign for Alvaro Mechia because Tony Rominger could well be moving up into a podium position today. Well in Durain for the first time is hurting and hurting badly here number one is winner of the tour the last two years and going for a hat trick here comes roach well at two kilometers to go it's still 20 seconds but he's doing an incredible ride he's looking extremely concentrated now all he's thinking about is just getting up to those three riders in front he had a bad patch at the bottom of the climb and he really has got the pressure on Roach. Let's hope that he can get to the front there because if it becomes a tactical sprint as it has done before between these two riders, he may well come up with the goods. One kilometre to go and here we have Tony Rominger still setting the pace towards the top of Plata Day. Injurain hurting but not dropping an inch on the leader here by Rominger and the chase by Stephen Roach. He's under the kilometre to go. He sees the tails of the cars this is a superb return of Stephen Roach. He could still surprise and snatch the stage. Well, it's 15 seconds at the red kite there. All it takes now is for these riders at the front, Tony Rominger and Miguel Indurain, to start playing the little bit of cat and mouse that sometimes happens. I know Indurain would dearly love to win the stage. He wanted to win the second Alpine stage. And if Stephen Roach can continue to come back, all he needs is for these two riders just to slow down a little bit. Now... Just how badly is Indurain in trouble here, or will he have the strength now to take the stage? Well, he looks as if he's gained a little bit of his composure again there. He looked down just to check his gears to make sure everything was all right. And you can see he's sitting up a little bit more comfortably. And now Rominger looking across to see what's happening for the sprint. And this is the ideal time for Stephen Roach. If they slow down a little bit, Roach could make that incredible comeback from behind. But now Rominger is on the front. He has to lead out the sprint. And I'm sure Indurain will try and come by him to take the victory. Well, it's happened in reverse before now. I've seen Roach lose a classic race by playing cat and mouse. 
and a rider come from the back and pass him in Liège, Baston Liège and take the sprint and that was Moreno Argentin then now can Roach do it to these three but I don't think so because now the meters are ticking down quite quickly 350 to go uh, Rominger wants to sprint he's looked over his shoulder he might well have seen Roach approaching but he's holding off as long as he can he wants really Miguel Indurain to start the sprint so he can have his back wheel but Indurain is not going to do it and watch out for Yaskula who's gone then and Yaskula goes, Rominger snatches the gear lever, takes on Yaskula. You see Indurain was in trouble, he can't hold the wheel. Indurain will concede, so be it a few seconds on the line, but at least he's shown to us today that he is human and he does crack if you race him the right way. Yaskula, brilliant win for him. Rominger is second and then a couple of seconds down is Miguel Indurain. And now, as the camera tightens in on the bend, we'll see the lonely figure of Stephen Roach come around it. He'll just be a few seconds too late, but he's had a magnificent day in the Pyrenees today. And now he can stretch his back. Stephen Roach will be delighted with that. Fourth place on the toughest stage of the race for him. Robert Miller taking fifth place, Andy Hampston sixth, and Mechia will get seventh, but more importantly, just, and only just, by about 15 seconds or so, he'll keep his second place overall. To Zenin Jaskula went for gold to become the first rider from Poland to win a stage ever of the Tour de France. They've held the yellow jersey once with Lech Piasecki. Now they have a stage winner in Zenin Jaskula. A great stage win by Zenin Jaskula, giving a first ever stage victory for Poland. Tony Rominger gets second place. Indurain concedes three seconds in the sprint, the first time he's done that. Stephen Roach almost made it, finishes fourth. Robert Miller takes fifth place. Zenon Jaskula tonight, a very happy man. Poland have led this race before, but they've never before won a stage. And the man who almost won it when he came up on that late rush, Stephen Roach, he's now with Paul Schoen. That was an incredible performance today. Halfway up the climb, it looked as if you were suffering a little bit with your back, then you seemed to recover. No, it's all the time suffering with my back, you know, but it's... I kind of want to try and, try and get back to the end before the finish, try and surprise them on the finish, but he is missing and lacking 20 seconds or so, you know. It's coming back all the time there. It must have been incredible. You could just see them in front. Tell us what it was like. You can imagine, you know, it was so... Like, I kind of, like, I see the kilometers coming down and I was getting closer and closer, but I wasn't getting, like... I wasn't getting, like, uh, too close, going meter by meter, like... But it was enough, um, it was so short to the finish, you know, well, I was happy enough, it was long enough, but I couldn't, I couldn't get any close to him. And the overall classification, no change amongst the leading six riders. Indurain, though, now leading by 4 minutes 28 seconds. It was 3 minutes 23 this morning over Alvaro Mechia. Zen and Yaskula closing in on Mechia and Tony Rominger there in fourth place. Bjarni Rees hung on today to his fifth place overall. Miguel Indurain, it hurt him today, but he gets another yellow jersey in the Tour de France and tomorrow he'll be out of the Pyrenees and he might be happy about that. The cut-off time today was 48 minutes and 30 seconds and the green jersey of Jamaluddin Abdu Jafarov finished well inside that, in fact just over 21 minutes behind. Sean Yates is very safely home as well, he was just over 25 minutes back so he survives for another day in the Tour de France. Remember all of the results as always on page 350 on Fortel. Tomorrow the Tour de France says goodbye to the Pyrenees, we go between Tarb and Po. Another great day in the saddle for these great cyclists. Until tomorrow, goodbye.